Go ahead, you did Sarah. You did Sarah, are you there? I think you're muted. I, I am, I was muted, I'm sorry, yes. Thank you to Adele, to Nomi, to um, Blima, to Chaya, and to Rebbe Yagid. This morning, we have the great, great pleasure of welcoming back Shoshi Nissenbaum. Hashem has gifted Shoshi Nissenbaum with the zuchut to teach Torah to women for over 25 years. Her shiurim are available online. Hundreds of women participate in her Sevira Saomer count, and in pre-corona <laughs> days, her trips to Kivrei Tzadikim. Shoshi teaches in Israel and American seminaries and is a professional med mediator and Toenet Rabanit. She lives in Ramat Beit Shemesh. Shoshi, it is really an honor and a privilege and a, to have you here, and we're so grateful you could be with us this morning. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good you can morning. hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Thank okay. you. Yofi. Okay. Thank you so much for having me again. It's always beyond the pleasure and beyond inspiring to join and see so many women take the time out of their busy, hectic, pre day, post-summer vacation, school start. There's always something going on in our lives. And to be able to set aside this time to connect to other women all across the globe and to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's, it's simply, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's the most amazing energy. Um, this week's Parsha, and of course, all the Parshios, which are leading up to Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, the whole month of Elul, any Parsha that we're going to read in this month is preparation for Rosh Hashanah and the other Yom and Mayrayim. And of course, we see that right away in the first Pasuk, in the first Mitzvah in this week's parsha, Parsha's Kisavo. Kisavo El Ha'aretz Asher Hashem Elokecha Noisein Lechav. And it will be when you come to the land which Hashem has given you, a nachla, a portion, the arashta, and you inherited it, the ashasta, and you settled it. And Pasuk Bet tells us, v'lakachta meireshis, and you should take from the first fruits of the land. And you should take these first fruits from the which sprout, which grow. And of course, it's talking here about the specific Shiva Saminim, the seven species which Hakadosh Baruch Hu has blessed Eretz Yisrael with abundance of these specific seven. And you should put them in a tena. In a special basket, the halachta el hamakom, asher Hashem, and you should bring it to the place which Hashem has chosen, the shaken shemo sham, to dwell His name there. Of course, referring to the base of Mikdash. So this is the mitzvah of Bikurim, and of course, the mitzvah of Bikurim is not a new mitzvah to us because the mitzvah of Bikurim is already hinted to us. It's alluded in the first pasuk in the Torah, Bereshis bara elokim in the in the beginning or beginning God created. Right, Genesis. Gracious Bara Elokim Esa Shamain the Esar. Rashi tells us what is this word gracious? Bishvil Rashis for the first. Bishvil had Torah Shemikaracious. For the Torah, the Torah is the first. It's called Rashis. Bishvil Yisrael Shemikaracious. For Kla Yisrael, which is called Rashis. And for the mitzvah of Bikurim. So Akarish Baruch who created the world. For three reasons, for Torah, for Am Yisrael, and for Bikurim. So Bikurim, our first mitzvah of this week's parsha, is the purpose of the world. That's a tremendous statement. What does that mean? That Bikurim, the first fruits, that's the purpose of the world? That's the entire purpose of the world? Yes, it is, in a nutshell. Because what is Bikurim? We'll get to that in a minute, but let's notice the Lashem. Bereshis, and then is the first word of the Torah. And here in this week's parsha, it tells us Mereshis kol priha adama. This is the word Rosh, head, and this is an allusion to Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, the first of the year. Now we know that the world was created physically in Nisan, right? The famous Machloikis in the Gemara, and we have a, a, a beautiful explanation of how both. Both opinions are correct because one opinion says the world was created in Tishrei. The other opinion says the world was created in Nisan, and they're both correct because 
Allah bin Machshavoso, it appeared, it came, it arose in Hashem's mind, whatever that means, the esoteric Kalviachal, Chazal speak, Beloshan Bene Adam, in a way that we can understand. Hashem contemplated the creation of the world in Tishrei, and it physically manifested in Nisa. So we understand now why Rosh Hashanah is called Rosh, the head, because it was thought. It's not the hands. It's not what's happening. It's not what's manifesting. It's what's going on in the head. And that's why Machshavot Tovot, good thoughts, are so important on Rosh Hashanah. They're essential on Rosh Hashanah because as we say every time after we blow the shofar, we say, Hayoyim Horos Oilam. Now, if you look in most machzorim, Hayoyim Horos Oilam means it's translated as today is the birthday of the world. But that is a mistranslation and it's an essential mistranslation. Hayoyim Horos Oilam means today is the Herayon. The pregnancy, the conception of the world. It's not the form, it's not the birth, it's the formation. And there's a huge difference because as we know in a physical sense, in an emotional sense, whatever a mother is experiencing, and father are experiencing during the time of conception, the thoughts that they put in, the food that they're eating, God forbid, a father or a mother, who at the time of conception are on drugs or other substances. It could have tremendous effects on the baby. The baby could be born with severe birth defects. So when the fetus is formed, the psychologically, emotionally, the thoughts, the presence of the parents, if there's love between them, if there's compassion, if there's a relationship between them, this affects the fabric. This affects the emotional fabric of the child. And the same thing, the mother's diet. If she's lacking in, in folic acid, etc., that could affect the physical side. So on Rosh Hashanah, Hayoyim Haras Oilam, on Rosh Hashanah, we are conceiving the world. We are conceiving our world. We're conceiving our year. And that's why we're so careful what we say on Rosh Hashanah. We don't say, Al no talking about chait, right? We don't get into that. We don't get into all the ashamu, bagadnu, gazalnu, because we're having only, we're trying our best, no pressure, only to have positive thoughts. And we eat only sweet foods because we only want to have sweet things, just like the parents need to be careful emotionally in their minds, what they're thinking, what they're eating, because this is conception. It's essential. So the rosh, Rosh is what's going on in the head, in the mind. Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. It's Hayoyim Haras Oilam, it's the conception. It brings us back to Bereshit, the conception of the entire world which takes place, because man, who was created in Rosh Hashanah, is the entire world. Bereshit, Bishvil Yisrael, for Kla Yisrael. Bishvil HaTorah, for the Torah, we understand the Kodesh Baruch Hu, we will to the Torah. What is so special about the myths of Bikurim? So let's look at what is the essence of Bikurim. What is Bikurim all about? Bikurim is about Hakaras Atoiv. It's about gratitude. It's about recognizing that this fruit came from HaKodesh Baruch Hu. Yes, I plowed. Yes, I planted. Yes, I pruned. Yes, I watered. Yes, I did everything. I protected it. I chased, I built a fence around so that animals can't come and harm it. I watched it from, from all the different things that could harm it. But it comes from HaKodesh Baruch Hu. It's that place of rec complete recognition. Gratitude is not something that we do. It's not a checklist, okay? Remember when you got gifts after you got married, after your bas mitzvah, right? So you had to write thank you cards, okay? I don't know if people still write thank you cards anymore. In, in Israel, it's not, I've never gotten a thank you card here. But in America, it's, it. when I was growing up, I don't know what it is now, you got a gift, for Hanukkah, you got a gift from anybody. It doesn't matter if it's your grandmother, your sister, you write a thank you card. What's the site? What, what, what is so important? It's recognizing, it's the creation of a relationship. It's the genesis of understanding what my place is in this world. I am a receiver. I am receiving God's abundance. I didn't make this fruit. I didn't create this. 
Hashem created it. Hashem gave it to me. And if I want to say, oh, but I invested and I tried and I worked, Hashem gave me that koach. And there are many, many people who worked very, very hard and never harvested because Hashem blessed this person. And for whatever reason, despite their hard work, Hashem chose not to bless them because that's what's best for them at this point. So the midah of hakar satov of gratitude is not something that we do, going back to thank you cards. It's not a checklist. Here, I wrote thank you, thank you, thank you. It's experiential. It's experiencing that high of recognizing that I have been gifted. I have been gifted with life. I have been gifted with so much in my life. And here we get to the piece that I named this year as, which is the secret of the B'nai Yisachar. The B'nai Yisachar, it's also pronounced the B'nai Yisachar. He writes in his Sefer on Chodesh Tishrei, and he says the following. He says, in Chodesh Tishrei, and during the whole Elul, all of the days of Yemei HaRacham in Bahaslichot, from Rosh Chodesh Elul until Hoshana Rabbah. And if you're very Hasidish, until Zos Chanaka, the last day of Chanaka. During these days, there's tremendous amount of Rachamin, of mercy, and the Shari, the gates of Tfila are so much more accessible, right? Tfila is not always whatever we ask, we get. And even we know that there's Chazal tell us, Shari de Ma'ois Loinin Olu, the gates of tears are never locked. But if something is never locked, why does it need gates? Because it's a filter. It acts as a filter to make sure that if we're going to ask for something that's not good for us, Hashem is not going to give us. For example, someone could say, I want Hashem, please give me this job. Hashem, please give me this house. Hashem, please give me this specific shidduch. And they ask for a specific shidduch, specific house, specific job. But that job or that shidduch or that house won't be good for them. It will bring them to a very, very bad place. It will cause them endless amounts of agony. So even if they cry for it, the gates of the most, the gates of tears through the pathway, which um, the, um, the prayers that are accompanied with tears go, Hashem says, stop, right? No, these prayers, I'm going to reroute to someplace else. But that shidduch, that house, that job, that plane you want to catch, no, that's not good for you. So I'm not going to give it to you. So Bnei Sacher says, during the Yemei Slichus Verachamim, there's tremendous potential for tefillah. Tefillah is more powerful and more potent than it is the whole year around. But, says the Bnei Sacher, if you really, really want to have success in your davening, you should, during these days, the focus should be in the second bracha of the Shemona Esra. What's the second bracha of Shemona Esrei? The second bracha of Shemona Esrei is gratitude. And the Bnei Yisachar says, when you say these words, right? When we say, Mechaye, Mesim, Ata, Rav, Lohoishia, HaKadosh Baruch you resurrect the dead. You send so many, so many, so much salvation into the world. The Bnei Yisachar says we should stop. And I'll give you a recommendation how to do this after I express the whole idea. The Bnei Sacher says you should stop and think how many times was I dead over the past year? How many times did I say that's it? I am giving up. I'm not getting out of bed. I'm not trying. How many times throughout the year did I say that's it? I don't feel anymore. Things that I one time enjoyed don't speak to me. I used to love going to place X. It doesn't give me chiyas anymore. It doesn't mean anything to me. I used to love being with certain people or with people, and, and now it doesn't mean anything to me. And I didn't, I was like dead. And I Kodesh Baruch Hu re-infused me with life. Mechaye Mesim. I Kodesh Baruch Hu resurrected the dead. Rav lo Think, have kavana of how many times that HaKadosh Baruch Hu saved me over the past year. How many pitfalls were there? How many, if we think about it in terms, especially those of us that live in Eretz Yisrael, how many tilim were sent? How many piguim did the Goyim try to do on us? And yet, here we are. So many bombs, so many missiles, so many attempts of terrorism. And, and it's amazing. It's utterly amazing. Rav lo 
Nechal kel chayim b'chesed. HaKadosh Baruch who sustains our lives with chesed. And I want to add in my own thought on this when I say this. Nechal kel chayim b'chesed. That HaKadosh Baruch who sustains my life. He gives me chiyas by giving me the ability and the opportunity to do a chesed for somebody else. We all know how good it feels when we could help somebody, when we have something to give to somebody else, whether it's a good word, whether it's a, a money to give staka, whether it's technical help to give somebody a ride. Michal kel chayim b'chesed, HaKadosh Baruch who gives us chiyas. He sustains us with opportunities and gives us energy to do chesed. And the Bnei Sacher says, and this we stop and we say, how many luxuries do I have in my life? How many different kinds of food do I'm going to have constantly on my table? Throughout the day, we think about menus and this food and this food, and I'm going to get this meat and, and what's in this magazine and color of food and texture of food and availability of food. How much luxury Hashem gives me. How many clothes I have. How many pairs of shoes, I'm not saying. How many different pocketbooks, I'm not telling either, right? No confessions right now. Just gratitude. Thank you, Hashem, for these things. Thank you, Hashem, that I have two pairs of sunglasses that I love. Thank you, Hashem, for the X amount, also not saying. How many black skirts I have. And each one is different than the other, and I love them all. Okay, we don't want to be like, you know, the teenagers, you know, they open their closet and the closet is like busting out and they're like, ma, there's nothing to wear, right? I have nothing to wear. I need a new black skirt. You have 30 black skirts in that closet, but you need a new black, yeah, right? We don't want to be like that, Tashem. Or, you know, the boys come home, they had beeline straight to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator, it doesn't matter what's in the refrigerator, right? Ma, there's nothing to eat. We want to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We can put flowers on our table. We have beautiful tables. We have beautiful kalim. We have a home. We have so many luxuries. Our car, everything. We want to stop and thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for every single pair of earrings that we have in our jewelry box. And then How HaKadosh Baruch Hu how throughout the Past year, Tavshin Pei Bet, Soimech Noiflim, how a Kodesh Baruch Hu picked us up so many times when we fell down. How many times did I fall again and again? I tried something and it didn't work. And somehow a Kodesh Baruch Hu gave me the grit, the determination to plow on. Soimech Noiflim, Veroy Fechoilim, and here the Bnei Sacher is Marich. And he says, There are so many people who need a Yeshua in Refua. There are so many sick people. The, the, the needs of Klai Yisrael Merubimheim, Tzarche Amcho Merubimheim. How can we help them? By stopping when, in these words, Roy Fechoilim, and to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for our health from head to toe. My head works. My eyes work. I hear. I can smell. I can taste. I have teeth. I have lips. I have a tongue. Head to toe, thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for everything healthy, for myself, for my family. And the Bnei Sacha then writes, it goes, at this point, you should stop and you should think of all of the people who recovered. Think of all the miracle stories that you heard of. People who had Rufua Shalema after they had terrible illnesses. We tend to focus very heavily on people who didn't recover. But there are many people who recovered. Thinking, how many people recovered from Corona? How many people have, yes, recovered from all different terrible illnesses? Baruch Hashem, people we daven for that are still Baruch Hashem here and not just still here, but many of them are completely recovered. Mention there in our minds, we're not talking, right? But in our kavanas, we're thinking of those names of all of those people who were healed. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you for all the reform that came into the world. Thank you so much. HaKadosh Baruch Hu unleashes those who are bound. All of us have certain limitations that we either put upon ourselves, that society put upon ourselves, that we were labeled that we can't do this. I want to tell you something. When I was a little girl, I was the little girl who cried at the sitter party and did not get on the stage because I was 
painfully shy as a six-year-old, painfully shy, five-year-old, six-year-old. I would not get up. I remember my grandmother offering me prizes, the principal offering me prizes, the teacher offering me prizes, certain family members threatening me that I better get up on that stage, right? Nothing worked. I sat in the corner and cried. I was painfully shy. And today, Baruch Hashem, Matira Surim, I can open my mouth. I can speak. I speak in Hebrew. I did so many things that Kodesh Baruch Hu brought me to a place to do so many things that I was afraid of. I was afraid of making Aliyah. I was afraid of a lot of other things. And somehow Kodesh Baruch Hu was Matir Asurim. He allowed me, he brought me, he unleashed my bounds. How many of us were enslaved to addiction? There are all kinds of addictions, right? And everybody at a certain point has some kind of addiction. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu was Matir Asurim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was loosening the grafts, the grip that the addiction had on us. And we're able to actually function. We're not a slave anymore to food. We're not a slave anymore to pleasing people. We're not a slave anymore to gossip. We're not a slave anymore to drugs, to alcohol, to smoking, to whatever, uh, shopping, whatever addiction. This, the B'nai Sacher says, this is the way to plow through the Yamim Toivim with our tefillah. Because tefillah, as we said, Shari Demos, even tears have a filter. But there's no gate when it comes to Hodaya. Hodaya has no gate. Shari Hoda, there's no such thing. It's just open connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's instant connection. Hodaya is instant connection. No barriers, no filters, no clearance, nothing. Straight to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And these are the most, Hodaya is the most potent and powerful tool that we can have during the Yamim Noiraim, during these days of Slichos and Rachamim. So the Bnei Sacher brings the Gemara down that says, Mida Toiva Meruba. The more gratitude we have, the more HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives to us. Now I've, I've seen this in so many families again and again. I never did a scientific study on this, but it seems to me that in every family, there's a pretzel counter. What do I mean the pretzel counters? Mother goes to make prepare the snacks for the kids, right? And she puts pretzels in the plastic bags. Along comes one kid and he looks at the bag and he has these like razor eyes, razor sharp eyes. He said, wait a second, Ruchi got three more pretzels than me. He, there's someone in every family who's always counting what's missing. Someone got more than me. And there's always in every family, somebody who appreciates, who says, thank you. Wow, thank, wow, there's pretzels. That, thank you. This is good. Thank you. Subconsciously, the child who thinks you're going to give them more, even if you don't realize it, they're going to get more. And the one who uh, 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 is going to get less. And the same kaviyachal, the mashal, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, somebody who appreciates. Hashem wants us to recognize him. Bishvil Reishis Nivra Oilam. Reishis was created, the world was created for the mitzvah of Bikurim, because Bikurim is recognizing and thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for everything we have. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the purpose of the world is to recognize. The purpose of the world is gratitude. Gratitude brings us joy. Gratitude, scientific studies have been done in this, that gratitude lengthens a person's life. They're appreciative of things. It could lengthen their life. It doesn't mean they're going to have the super long life, but their life will be the, their, their ability to live longer than what their body could handle will be extended. And this is what the Bnei Sacha tells us, how we have to go into Rosh Hashanah, Yomim Neiroyim. This is the secret weapon. This is the secret arsenal of getting our, giving our prayers powerful booster rockets to achieve what we want to do because it's instantaneous achievement. The whole purpose of prayer is to connect to Hashem. And the minute I'm in a mode and experiencing Hakara Satov, though, I achieved it. I got it. I got that connection. I got that joy. That's the joy of prayer is gratitude is thanking HaKodesh Baruch Hu. And this is what this week's parsha is. And this is what we want to put in our heads on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, we want to put in our heads, thank you, Hashem. Thank you for all the good of the past year. We want to highlight it. We want to dwell on it. We want to meditate on it. We want it to be the focus of our day. 
So what I want to recommend is to take that second paragraph of Shmona Esrei, what we, the words we just spoke about, from there on till Matir Asurim, and take a piece of paper, a lot of pieces of paper, pieces of paper, and write the, the two words, right? Um, Rav lo hishia, mechal kel chayim b'chesed goes up. Rav lo hishia on one page, mechal kel chayim b'chesed on another page. So mechnoiflim on one page, rofecholim on one page, and to make lists, lists of things that we want to thank Hakadosh Baruch Hu for, lists of things that Hashem gave us in such abundance, and we want to bring that list so deep into our mind to be so appreciative. This will chase away all of the bad thoughts because bad thoughts tend to prop up on, on Rosh Hashanah. And sometimes it could be very hard. You know, you bought a seat in shul, somebody's sitting in it right away, someone's starting with you, the lady next to you keeps sneezing and leaving her dirty tissues on your chair. Whatever it is, you, you, you found a babysitter for your kids, you came to shul and Somebody else brought their kids and they're screaming and crying during the whole Kiyoshifer and you don't know if you were Yoytze, if you were not Yoytze, right? Nobody says thank you for all the food you made. There could be a million things that could pop into your mind of bad thoughts. We, want to t- we don't want bad thoughts on Rosh Hashanah. We're conceiving our year. We need thoughts of gratitude. We want a year full of gratitude another year full of gratitude, a year full of even more things to be grateful for. So I want to wish everyone that all of the blessings should call upon every single year, blessing of knowing Hashem, blessing of revelation, blessing of Kirov, of being close to Hashem, blessings of Shefa, of having Nachat from children, of having children, of having Parnasatova of having Yirat Shamayim and Avas Hashem and the blessing of feeling and experiencing gratitude on a daily basis. Have a wonderful day and a Shana Tova Umitsuka and very, very, very sweet. Amen. 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 Thank you for that beautiful bracha. Before I thank you for speaking with us, do you have a few moments for any questions or comments? Sure. Okay. Ladies, does anyone have a question or a comment for Shoshi? Sarah? I do. Um, firstly, thank you so much. That was awesome. Welcome. Um, I, I was wondering if you can speak practically, like on Rosh Hashanah, that moment when those thoughts come up, what do you do? Just like, just switch and go, oh, I've got to thank Hashem for something. Or like, what's your advice on those moments when, because it does happen. It does happen. So, um, and then I'm sorry. And then it creates all this pressure. Is something, right? Consciousness is something. Oh my gosh! Oh my Oh my Oh no! Oh no! Oh! And then you start going. Ah, and then. And then you, you know, start beating yourself up. Why am yeah. I thinking these bad thoughts? What kind and of bad person I am? Just the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So remember those old radios that had dials, right? Remember those. I mean. Yes. Anyone, anyone remember those? <laughs> okay, so yes. I have this, when I start thinking these bad thoughts, my first my first um, attempt at squelching them is I have this like image in my mind of change the channel, okay? Wow. So maybe like today, it's more like with the remote, but um, what I have in mind, like it's static. Remember you used to like try to find the station and it was like, Zzzz. so that bad thought is static. I want to change the channel. And I have this like, and sometimes I'll do it with my hand just to like feel it. I'm changing the channel now. I'm going on to something else, right? I don't want, I don't want static. Okay. That's the first, first, first thing I'll try. Okay. But it doesn't always work. Okay. It really doesn't always work. Um, attempt number two, plan B when plan A fails is a song. Okay. You have a song in your head. Prepare it. Rabbi Nachman says a person should always have a song on their lips, right? Because in case you start falling into marash chayra, into bad thoughts, you start singing the song, okay? And that that doesn't always work, okay? So plan A didn't work. Plan B didn't work. What's plan C? Plan C is, this might not be so orthodox. Plan C is, I have something to read, okay? 
that might not be anything that has to do with Rosh Hashanah, but it's something that makes me happy or something that will take my mind off of it, whether it's living even vicariously for a couple minutes in somebody else's story, somebody else's life, something that will take me out of those bad thoughts. Because whatever you do, you got to get out of those bad thoughts without beating yourself up or being abusive to yourself. So you have to have, and my plan might not work for you, right? Everyone has to have their own plan. My plan is plan A, plan B, emergency, plan C. Just read anything, right? Anything that I like that makes me happy. It has to make you happy though, right? Like it's going to make you, oh my gosh, it's so depressing, this story, right? That's not, that's not going to help. But something that's just going to distract you and sometimes to fight the bad thoughts head on just makes me sadder or makes the thoughts like it feeds the thoughts almost and they start to take over. Rosh Hashanah, I don't want to deal with this. We'll deal with this. I service to make true. So Gedalia, your Arab Yom Kippur. We can think about all the bad things I did then. Now, I want my thoughts to be sweet. So that's the that's the plan. So kind of you have to prepare this ahead of time. Absolutely. Kind of have it ready just in case. Absolutely. Yeah, we are, we're always preparing for this. We're always, always, always preparing for what we should do if we get bad thoughts. We have to have some kind of line of action, some kind of defense. We're, as yeah. we learned in last week's parsha, we're going to war against the Yitzhara. We got to have a good plan. If we don't have a good plan, we're goners. We're just going to end up with a lot of sadness that could really, really overtake us or bad thoughts. And they come, you know, we could go to Shul and we could see somebody who's davening with tremendous kavana and crying. And it's like, I'm so jealous of her. Like, why can't I get to that mode of concentration? Why can't I say five words without spacing out? Okay. Why do I have such spiritual ADD? And everybody around me seems to be like totally focused and their kids are all dressed perfectly. How do they keep their clothes so clean? And could someone explain to me how everyone looks, except for me, freshly made up the second day of Rosh Hashanah? Right? How come it doesn't work for me? I just have smeared black, like I look like a baseball player, right? And so jealousy comes all the time. It pops up. And we have to have our battle plan. Very, sounds, very clear. I'm sorry, it sounds like a pecola that you bring for the kids of their treats to have to, and to keep them occupied and happy. So you have to have a pecola of all your, a bag of all your items to, of re, resort, resources and reinforcements. A Mary Poppins size bag. <laughs> right, right. Um, Shoshi, we have a few other people, Fruma and Shandy and Freda would like to add something, okay? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi, um, I just wanted to, could you please one more time go over that gratitude, um, like, like how to, you know, from the Shmanesri, like the different things that we should uh, focus on. I didn't get it down. I just wanted to get it down, please. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll say it really quickly. And then if you need more, you can re-listen to the, to the share. I'm pretty sure okay. it was recorded. I think we're still recording. Um, the second Thank bracha you. of Shmanesri has these, this phrases of gratitude. And within each phrase of gratitude, we want to isolate that phrase and stop and have intentions of thanksgiving, of gratitude that are relevant to those words. So when we're saying, for example, the easiest one, rofecholim, Hashem heals. We're praising Hashem for healing those who are ill. We want to, in our mind, thank Hashem for healing us and the fact that you know our bodies function. And, and maybe we had certain illnesses. You know, I, just a short story. I, I had a friend who she suffered from terrible migraine. And she used to call out to Hashem, like scream to Hashem, Hashem, please take away my headache. Hashem, please take away my headache. And, and one day, just an ordinary day, her daughter says to her, Mommy, do you have a headache now? And she says, no. So her daughter says to her, how come you don't scream thank you to Hashem that I don't have a headache? So when we're saying we're say, saying to Hashem, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the healing and all the help I have in my family, in Kla Yisrael. We want to thank Hashem and literally list in our mind, not in our lips because we're in the middle of Shemona Esrei, but in our minds to list the people that we know that Hashem heals. 
okay? And so just you can t- take all the phrases and make lists of those things that Hashem gave you, which are relevant to that phrase of praise. Thank you. Thank you. Shandy, Shandy, hope you're feeling better too. Hi. Hi, everybody. First of all, this was an amazing share. I loved it. And thank you so much. First of all, secondly, I want to thank this whole entire group, the Nishmas, because I went to surgery. Well, I was, okay, talking about Hoda'a and thanking Hashem. Um, I had a very hard year this year because they didn't know what was wrong with me. I was in such pain. They gave me, they thought it was my back and epidurals they gave me and I could hardly walk. Finally, at the end, I could hardly walk and my PT told me that it was my hips and I got an MRI and I needed two hip replacements. Okay, so ordinarily you'd say, why me? I'm 60 years old. I'm a personal trainer. I play tennis and swimming, but I have to tell you all because of all of you, I was thanking Hashem for my training. I, I'm a trainer, so I had a lot of jobs this summer in pools. A lot of people from Lawrence hired me, and, it, and I was able to dance and do my thing in the pools. But I have to tell you, I must tell you all, that when I was going, Chaya, I don't know if you're on the phone, when I was going into surgery on Thursday, I think, I mean, and there was this one um, black nurse that she was amazing, but she was from Jerusalem and she know Hebrew. And my son from Eretz Yisrael was calling me to wish me, you know, good luck. And she's saying, hi, Rabbi. Hi, Rabbi. She was so funny. I was singing Ms. Mara Latoza eight times. I said, Hashem, I know you're going to take care of me. I was singing it and I know I'm going to be better. And I was crying and I was singing. And I said, I know I'm going to be better than ever. And thank you. And then when I came out of surgery, I thanked him again because Baruch Hashem. But before surgery, I was doing all my WhatsApp groups for Tehillim. All the people that never have cancer and really sicknesses. I was going through all my Tehillim groups to say Tehillim, like Capital Tehillim, to each person. Because you know, when you dive in for other people, she was saying, Rofech Ole, you dive in for other people, Hashem takes care of you. And now... You know, you have to be at a level and it takes a long time. I'm at that level that I knew I was not nervous for a minute. I was like in a, and the doctors and he wheeled me in and they were like singing. It was an amazing hospital and everything. But I was like, I felt like I was like in my mishmas group going into, into the hospital, into the surgery. And I just want to thank Nomi. I know you wrote to you. Sorry, you didn't dedicate. You did so much. All of you. I just. Really, I sang the Ms. Moore back and forth and coming. And I just want to give all of you this chizuk because I so I figured it out. Hashem wants me to be able to dance and Mesa Shem in a couple of years. My granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, is 16. I said, he wants me to be able to dance and be me at a chasana and Shem at the right. Like you have to have that outlook and say, Hashem, you know what's best and not sitting on my porch. Shabbos after Shabbos, I could not walk, and it was killing me. I saw everyone passing, walking on beautiful weather. It was killing me, but I said, thank you, Hashem. I know you want me to slow down. I, I, I found out why he did this. He wanted me to slow down. He wanted people to take care of me instead of me taking care of them because that's what I usually do, and it's very, very hard for me. I was crying the other day when I had to ask my mother or my husband to get something for me and I started to cry and I said I'm not an easy person and I can't do this but then I said please have patience and at the end of the day I thank Hashem so I just wanted to tell you all you know me the people that really know me on the oh, Sish Bus group and I just want to tell you to keep it it's Elo thank Hashem for my when I came home from the hospital my children my grandchildren was waiting my mother my sisters they were all like I felt like the whole entourage, I started to cry. My husband, I, I, I'm a big cry baby. And I said, I'm the luckiest person. Thank you, Hashem. I have an amazing support group of friends. They made a meal train. So, you know, I'm not a needy person, but you have to sometimes say thank you. And you have to accept people giving to you. And I just wanted to tell you all. So I, I, I love 
so happy that oh, I got it. So Baruch Hashem, thank God that you're better. Thank you for sharing that. We have three more people who want to speak, uh, Freda, Judith, and Janice, and then we'll stop. If you have time, Shoshi. Yeah, hi. Okay. Um, Rabbitson, I always thought that um, I, I try to do the modim, and that's where I do my thanking. So I didn't hear in the second bracha that that's where I should do. I try to think of a whole bunch of every modim, some different things. I guess I could do it at both places, but B'nai Yisach says B'nai, only. Yeah, do the, he doesn't say only. He says that this is a very, very, very powerful, potent way of prayer, is mm-hmm. to utilize the second bracha. And what about modim? Most people, I'm sure that also is great. <laughs> Most people, though, have more kavod in the beginning. Beginnings are always easier than ending. It's mm-hmm. much harder to wrap up the year and end the year than it is to start the year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Yes. When we're starting a project, we start it. So we start it with tremendous energy. When we're finishing a project, it's like, oh my gosh, can this just go away already? Or I'll mm-hmm. just pay someone else to finish it. So mm-hmm. when we start the Shmona Esra, it's the same way. We're fresher in the second bracha than mm-hmm. in the Moedim, which is almost the last bracha. Probably, oh, yeah. my, I don't know for sure. But that's my idea of, uh, okay. of why the B'nai says the second book. Okay, thank you. Part of the idea. I'm sure there's deep Kabbalistic reasons, but practically speaking, for, for me, that's what would work better. I am. Thank you. Okay. Judith? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so Robertson, you had mentioned that when uh, when we say uh, Rafa'enu, you know, so underneath that there is a paragraph, and then you can actually say names of people. So I was under the impression that you can actually say the names, not only the machshava. Here we're talking I mean, here in, I... in the second in the second bracha, we're talking about having intention, not saying names of people who were healed, not who need refua. But thanking Hashem for healing people in the bracha rifa'enu, that's asking Hashem to heal everyone and specifically these people. So it's the opposite end of the spectrum. But we're in the second bracha, we don't add in names, we don't add in words, but we can add thoughts. So this is so rifa'enu, we can mention names, and the same thing, it's baruch uh, shomeat fila, you know, then. There are quite right. a few paragraphs detailed, you know, that you can have your own, whatever you want to add. Whatever you so want. That, that those brachas and, the machtava, for, in, you in those brachas in Shema Kulein, you could add in whatever you want at the right time. We're talking about the this second bracha, which is a bracha of gratitude. And to the more intention we invest in this bracha, the more powerful the tefillos are. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Rebetson. Um, I would like to get Shandy's uh, contact information uh, because I need uh, the replacement too, if she's willing, or I could give her mine. It's, yeah. in, the, it's in the chat. Her number's in the chat. Uh, yeah, I could give it to you now if you want. You could yeah. private message her in the chat and ask her. Yeah, yeah, do it in the chat. Thank you. I, I want to, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we have the Zohar to be together in this space in the morning or afternoon, wherever we are. Shoshi, I want to thank you so much. You've given us a beautiful way to um, elevate our, our Elul work and to elevate our Rosh Hashanah experience. And we're very grateful, very grateful to you for all that you shared with us from the B'nai Yisachar and from your heart. We wish you a, a Shana Tova, Kasiva Vachasima Tova, and for everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Mir Tashem, before Rosh Hashanah, I'm going to be giving a shir on the Machzor, which comes with bookmarks. I'll, um, and it will be on Zoom. Um, God willing, I'll let Nomi know and she'll post it. Or if anyone wants, just in case that doesn't work, um, I put my number in the chat. If you want, you can just send me a, a, a message or a email that you want to be notified when the Rosh Hashanah Machsar Shir is going to be and when the Yom Kippur. And to get it, receive a copy of the bookmarks. Wow, well, thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I pasted it in the chat so everyone could connect.